Hello medicos. Today we are up with the topic anterior uveitis or higher dose cyclitis. It's a very important topic and a favorite topic of the examiners and questions come in theory as well as MCQ. So let's start. Here's the definition. The definition is inflammation of the uveal tissue from the iris up to the pulse piqueta of the ciliary body. So it may be subdivided into iditis, iridocyclitis and anterior cyclitis. So as the name suggests, iditis it affects the iris only. In iridocyclitis it affects both the iris and the ciliary body, which part of the ciliary body? Pars plicata, as you can see. And in anterior cyclitis only the ciliary body is involved. So let's go with the symptoms now. The symptoms can be remembered by BP from Haryana. So here B stands for blurring of vision. P stands for pain and photophobia, H stands for corneal haze, and R stands for redness. Okay, so BP from HR. Now the signs, the signs are lead edema, circumcorneal congestion, which uh, amounts for redness in the eye. The corneal signs, the corneal signs are corneal edema, which occurs due to increase in the IOP. Now, the another sign which is seen is the keratic precipitates. Now it can come as a separate three marker or five marker also keratic precipitates. So let's know the definition. What are keratic precipitates? Keratic precipitates are proteinaceous cellular deposits on the corneal endothelium. It's a pathognomic sign of anterior uveitis. And most common area it is found is a imaginary area known as Arles triangle. Okay. So to now remember the types of KPs, we need to remember MFS. So M stands for mutton fat KPs, occurs in granulomatous iridocyclitis, composed of epithelioid cells and macrophages, composed of epithelioid cells and macrophages. And F stands for the fine granular KPs. Fine granular KPs occurs in non-granulomatous uveitis and is composed of lymphocytes. In stellate KPs, uh, it covers entire corneal endothelium and forms endothelial dusting. It is seen in herpetic uveitis and toxoplasmosis. And lastly, we have the old KPs. These are signs of heel uveitis. They have ground glass appearance due to hyalinization. So, we can remember the KPs by MFS, mutton fat, fine granular, stellate, and last, old KPs. Now, the anterior chamber signs can be remembered by 2A and 2H. 2A stands for aqueous cells. Aqueous cells are markers of disease activity and they can be graded from plus minus to 4. Aqueous flare. Aqueous flare is the turbidity translucency of the aqueous due to leakage of proteins and it is visible due to Tyndall effect. So what is Tyndall effect? So in a dark room if you pass a torch light you can see fine particles suspended in the air. It is known as Tyndall effect. So due to this effect we can see aqueous flare in the anterior chamber. And the 2H stands for hypopion and hyphema. What is hypopion? When exudates are heavy and thick, they settle or gravitate down in lower part of the anterior chamber known as hypopion. It's a swelling basically. Cause of hypopion is associated with anterior uveitis uh, is Bechet's disease. Hyphema. Hyphema is collection of blood in the anterior chamber. The causes of hyphema associated with anterior uveitis are herpetic uveitis, toxoplasmosis and syphilis. Now the iris signs, in the iris signs you can see pseudorubiosis, it's also known as neovascularization of iris. So how pseudorubiosis is seen, the, due to the dilated iris vessels, they are quite visible and they look like rubiosis iridis. Okay? In acute cases you can see waterlogged iris or muddy iris. In chronic cases we see iris atrophy. So if it's a sectoral iris atrophy, then it's herpetic uveitis. And if it's diffuse iris atrophy, it is FHI. In iris nodules, iris nodules occurs typically in granulomatous uveitis. There are two types of iris nodules, the coppice nodules and the busacus nodules. The coppice nodules are found in the pupillary margin and the busacus nodules are situated near the colorate. These are larger than the coppice nodules, but are less common. So the more common nodules are copes nodules, okay, and the larger nodules are busacus nodules. In posterior sinicae, 
What is posterior synechia? How is it formed? Due to exudates pouring in the posterior chamber, there is addition of complete posterior sur surface of iris with the lens. So since the iris adheres with the lens, it forms posterior synechia. Okay. Cyclitic membrane due to exudates pouring behind the lens, which covers the ciliary process and posterior surface of the lens. And as a result, there is no aqueous secretion and hence there is decrease in IOP known as hypotonia. Nextly, we have the pupil signs. What are the acute in acute cases we see meiosis, in chronic cases we see festoon people. All you need to remember in acute case meiosis, chronic case for festoon people. Now, why do you see a festoon people? Again, the reason is exudation. So, exudation leads to formation of incomplete posterior synechia, and hence there is dilation of the pupil, and hence the dilate pupil dilates irregularly, and hence the festoon pupil is seen. So it's basically a irregular shape pupil. Okay, in recurrent cases we see a fixed pupil. Why a fixed pupil is seen? Because there is a formation of annular or ring synechia. Pupil completely adheres with the lens, and hence it's fixed. And aqueous is not able to flow from the posterior chamber to the anterior chamber, and hence there is secondary angle closure glaucoma, which is also a complication of anterior uveitis. And last is occlusio pupillis. So as the name says, occlusion means blockage. So exudates again gets organized across the pupil and blocks the pupil. So since it blocks the pupil, it gets the name occlusio pupillae. Next we have IOP, acute cases, raised IOP due to secondary open angle glaucoma. And in chronic cases, there is uh, due to cyclitic membrane and shutdown of the ciliary body, it re causes reduced IOP. So there both increase in IOP and reduce in IOP. So in acute cases there is increase in IOP and in chronic cases there is decrease in IOP. In the next video you are going to discuss about the complications. We are going to discuss about the complications and the causes and the treatment of anterior uveitis. So stay tuned for more updates.